Dustin, the producer, got this. Yo, y'all know what it is, y'all know what it ain't. And this topic right here touched home. It touched home when I first started hearing about what was going on with Young Chop and his mental condition, especially with him losing his mom. Just everything that transpired after that. A lot of people got this saying going around, not even going around. I think, yeah, Dirk made a song called Kanye Crazy. In order to reach Kanye Crazy, you either have to have a traumatic brain injury or a traumatic emotional experience to make you even reach that level of Kanye crazy. So let's talk about it. Young Chop from the south side of Chicago, like everybody from the drill culture, pretty much. When you when you think about our West, you don't think about drill, unfortunately. But it, it's not really unfortunately. I take that back. Because if you think about it, drill dis- destroys some culture as soon as it hit their area and their hood worldwide. But Young Chop held it from that south side. Um, he learned how to make beats at an early age. You know, he a big dude, obviously. So he started off trying to play football. I don't think that really worked out. I think some suicides felt a little too much like suicide for my boy. So he, he stuck to the pork chops and the uh, 808s and all the other drum steers instead. And he learned how to make beats, actually, when I was doing my research from this, from the late great Smiles from JoJo World. Um, Young Chop said it out his own mouth, and Smiles actually backed it up. And it was amazing to even hear that. Because that shows you the connection that a lot of these dudes had before the war and exactly how it affected people who didn't even have a, a, a um, I don't want to say a gang affiliation because, like, you're going to find, figure out exactly why I say that with Chop. But it is not really affecting anybody who intertwined with the beef. Actually, Young Chop made a beat for being a black. I remember when I first heard it when I was like 17 on a Call of Duty Black Ops mixtape for bit that Billion that Black had. He produced a beat on that song. I mean, on that mixtape. Um, but shortly after learning how to make beats, he ended up meeting Chief Keef on Facebook and produced the, the whole Back From The Dead mixtape. Um, if y'all really, really go back and think about how was it like a, just a, a chance encounter with Chief Keef meeting Young Chop, it actually wasn't. Um, a producer, a super producer from Chicago in my eyes, uh, named Paris Bueller, uh, he started a group of producers called Bandcamp. And that's exactly how... Him and Sosa connected on Facebook. Now, back to the reason why I said this about the gang affiliation with Young Chop. If you go back and watch some of his lives, I was thinking about including some clips in her and put it in the video like a lot of other channels do, but copyright too tricky, and I'm not finna worry about that. Um, Young Chop is actually a stone. In the live videos I was saying, he was like, I'm not even a GD, I'm not a BDI, none of that. That's because he's a black P stone. You feel me? He's a black P stone. And he from May Block. And if you ain't too familiar with May Block, that's over there in like the 72nd, 74th area of May. Um, I actually went to school. I actually lived on 79th Aberdeen for a minute. And like I say all the time, probably heard me, probably didn't. I went to Amos Alonzo Staggs right there on 72nd and Morgan. Just to give you a little idea of what, what area of May Block in, if you remember that school. But they pretty much beef with, beef with um, if you ever heard of CMB, I think Fonzo 6700, they, he repped them. But also the Goonie Boss Gang, um, if you're familiar with the, that group that got the whole indictment dealing with that with that dude named O-Dog. If you're familiar, you're familiar. But like I said in the beginning of this video, man, Young Child went through a lot of different things, man. He went through so much stuff in the past three years. It just give you a chance to evaluate somebody on an autistic spectrum. And also just their mental behaviors because a lot of, I hate saying this, but a lot of people, man, in the black community go undiagnosed with mental health, man. Just because he didn't, wasn't acting crazy in the beginning of his career don't mean anything. Because if you really start paying attention to everything that was going on, you know, Chop always liked to speak his mind. You remember when um, Chief Keith came out with the with that um, Back from the Dead too. Young Chop got mad, you know. He got real mad and said, since Sosa could drop another classic um, album without him, who contributed to the, the whole first whole first body of work, that he gonna drop a finally witch, uh, um, a finally rich too, which he did. And then Chief Keith even said he not working with no more produ- uh, none of his old producers, and people thought they had beef behind that when really Chop was speaking his mind. A lot of people would say that was like the beginning of him showing, like, I guess. 
um, anger towards people. But that was just me, in my opinion, him speaking his mind. But when he lost his mom and he lost his grandma not too long after that, I think every just everything with his OG it just really made him say F it. You know, he turned against Chicago. Uh, Polo G, Meek Mill said he was drugged by G Herbo. Pretty much said Kanye used him, Vic Mesa, and Sosa. He said, yeah, he don't do nothing for Chicago. Um, if you remember that live, that Young Chop and Gilly, Gilly the Kid, I guess he just go by Gilly now. They went live in about 2020, and Chop said, 21 and Amigos, scary. The scariest rappers that he feel to rap about something that don't portray it. Um, when the uh, Lil Baby and Offset fight happened, he exposed details in the fight. Pretty much said... Uh, he 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 turning his back on the industry and even Chicago. If you really kind of want to look at it that way, um, especially when she, the young chop went to Twenty One Savage Hood. Twenty One told him, "Don't think you tough just because you're from Chicago." And he, he I, I don't want to say he was the first person, but he was one of the first people to not even say he taking it serious. That he just really acknowledging this as young chop having a mental breakdown. Then he just went back and forth through Zone Six, threatening random people. Saying he gonna shoot, he gonna sweep the hood. Uh, then he just kept riding through, threatening people, bro. Um, I, I heard him in a in a live talking about he gonna shoot it up. Um, he was riding around with a gun on a motor scooter. The gun fell. Uh, honestly, if you really think about it, he was just sounding a little lame, just getting into a random people that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. And um, he even started sounding a little off. And that's when he started sounding a little slow to me, like some off a young chop. I don't know what's going on. Then boom. He got the Uber shot up, riding around in that manhood, rocking up to people, talking about, I ain't going to shoot you, big fella. What you think? I'm going to shoot you? Then talking about, I'll shoot this man up. He was just tweaking, bro. Just It was just ridiculous. Should have been embarrassing if, if it was to a regular person, but when you in that state of mind, I don't even think that's drugs. Like You got to pay attention to that. Like, I don't think that's drugs. Could be some crack. But what type of drug make you do that? Pills? Perks? And if they do, I'm trying to tell you, gang, it's that mental illness combined with that that drug toxicity mess mess with their chemical imbalance that they already got. But Lil Reese even told him, stop tweaking. Like, bro, you tweaking. Vine got on live with him, told him, asked him if he's cool, do he need something, tell him what's wrong with him. You know, then he got locked up uh, for what, what it was, for reckless conduct, because it was he the courts blamed him for being at fault, for posting his location and time 21 Savage when he was with the Uber driver on live putting the Uber driver life in danger. Then he dropped a diss song towards Drake and other motherfuckers. I don't even know what that beef was for. That's when the cloud chasing started coming in because why you why are you antagonizing Drake? I ain't never see Drake do nothing to say nothing to you, gang. Uh, dropped that diss, source, that diss song towards Drake, French Montana, other motherfuckers. Some of them he don't know. Then he posted that half-naked video on the porch, gang, shooting at the darkness, telling motherfuckers what's up. Got booked for violating papers and starving his dog to death, gang. And he was a little entertaining in between then, too. Let's not act like Young Chop getting head on live. I think he farted in her mouth and she kept sucking, gang. And it was like, you'll think some of this stuff made up. Like, you'll think Young Chop doing this for clout. But I think at a point in his life, he just felt like he was living. Like, everybody lived life their way. Like, right now, I'm having my way with this shit. And I don't mean I'm having it more than you. Or I'm, I'm just saying the way, what I want to do in life, I'm able to do it. So when you're able to do it on a larger scale than others, you start feeling invincible. And a little cloud chaser could be associated with that as well. But um, he starved his dog to death, man. Red flag. Just like You could just tell he was off. Because I like like at least like a, psych, a psycho, sociopath, them type of people shows no love for animals. None. None, man. And we should have known when he went off on Kanye for changing the beat a little bit on Don't Like. Before Chop or Keith even blew up, I heard the WGCI segment firsthand, shorty. Like, I heard it in the car. Uh, and it, I heard it in the car, bro, and he was just going off on them. Uh, 2020 was even crazier, bro. He got into it with Southside, exposed Southside uh, from 808 Mafia, uh, paid to get his jewelry back. Uh, then Southside dissed his dead OG. But at that point, Young Chop really put, pretty much brought it on himself. Um, he finally addressed being drugged. After people was wondering if he was having like a symptomatic episode, then he dissed his own brother, Johnny Maycash, for saying pray for him and pretty much said like, pray for my brother, Chop, he on drugs. Even I don't got control over my brother right now. And it's getting to a point where the drugs taking over his life. And Young Chop, 
his first response, you know, wasn't, wasn't to even thank his brother for being worried. Um, but it, it was because I guess, you know, the way people feel like if you really love me, don't address me on social media. But if you get that big, well, everybody address like reaching out to your family on social media. I think some people, depending on how close they are, they are to you in a situation, they got it right. But then he started blaming uh, Johnny Maycash career for failing is the reason why he's saying what he said, bro. Um, he said, what what, what he said? He said, he said he got issues, bro, like, like, like back to back. Uh, if you really think about it, you know, Chop started exposing his brother issues, I meant to say. I just like doing drugs, popping pills. You know, I thought Johnny May Cash was the older brother, but actually Chop is the big bro. Um, if y'all remember this live, Chop was showing how he just got different rappers up, pictures hanging up in his crib, his mama. But he took his, he took young Johnny May Cash picture down and put it in the closet. And we're going to get to that in a minute, man, because I wonder how he ended up feeling about it. Because all this happened the same year. Um but then he said he stopped smoking weed right after he got laced. Uh, and I had a homie, I ain't gonna lie, man, a fat dude named Eddie. If y'all ever look up, look me up on SoundCloud, he was a fat dude who helped me make my music back in the day. And we did some shrooms one day. Uh, I told the man, he said he didn't feel the shrooms. I said, look up at the ceiling and look back down. He started laughing. We was all fried. Then he just started tweaking, accusing me. Like, man, did you lace my weed? I'm too high, I'm too high. Like, stupid, you did a psychedelic. That's not me, man. And so, and he... Turned out that he told me he really got bipolar, bipolar like disorder type one and a little bit of schizophrenia. And that makes sense, gang. If young chop smoked some drugs, or I mean, smoked some weed or did some drugs, peel or anything that was too strong for him, of course he's going to feel laced. If he the only one tweaking in the room, that's because his mental condition can't handle these strong drugs, bro. I seen it firsthand. And I hate to make it seem like I got a story for everything, but I, I do, man. You know, you got to live a little bit. But um, Johnny May Cash said he was off drugs. But I think it was really for a lack of meds or going undiagnosed could have been the cause of his whole rent for that year. You know, mental issues surface in men, not even just black men, but in men in their mid-20s and women in like their late teens. Um, now, on his brother, in April 2022, oh, yep, April 2022, uh, I'm sorry, I think I said earlier in the video it was the same year, but it wasn't. So fast forward, April 2022, Johnny Maycash passed away. After that video was released of him beating his girl, and like he was looking real unstable himself, bro. Like it was just, it was like he hair butted her, if I'm not mistaken. He was just slapping her, just doing all different types of crazy things, and just looked like he was off and just not there all the way himself, gang. Like that's probably why Chop really felt that way and said the things he said. Cause who are you to throw rocks and hide your hand? However, however they say that in the Bible, um, but. If you really go back and think about it, after we seen that video uh, of him kind of just looking crazy, you know, he grew some dreads, but he got like three wicks in his head, the hot top type of wicks, and, you know, that don't got nothing to do with anything, but, you know, just got to pay attention to all the surroundings when the situation like that happened. Um, she start, She actually claims self-defense due to history of violence. That wasn't his first time actually beating her and her fault, calling the police and filing a report. I think the CPD really didn't do their job on this one. And two lives lost, if you ask me. More than one, uh, if you look at all the loved ones affected. Um, but then he, but see, if you look at that, man, to, and fast forward to what he's going through now, he lost his mom, his granny. That mom, man, I'm try, I lost my mama gag. I'll never be the same. And just losing his brother, especially after taking the picture down. And who knows if they mended their relationship before he died, bro. Um like, like that, 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 that was real hurtful. You could just imagine how he was feeling, and he really been real silent lately. Um, probably because I think he was locked up uh, late 2023. Uh, a video was released last year, a young chop being escorted back to his cell. Cause guess why? He was tripping, getting in, getting in the fight, um, getting in that fight with security. I meant to say, really showed me back then he wasn't afraid to speak his mind, but he also showing me he don't know when to shut up. And which is an undervalued skill and asset to have as in a grown man in America. You just got to know when to shut the fuck up. But seeing that video of him in jail, I think he's still incarcerated for sure. That's why he's been silent. But when he get out, I just hope he used whatever medications they gave him, whatever resources they gave him for community outreach, and he could seek the help he need. But one thing I can say, you know, I don't, you know, even if you could say he turns his back on Chicago at a point, when Lil Durk and Chief Keith was beefing, 
he got him on the phone and got him to squash their beef, did that legendary Vlad interview saying it was really over nothing. Then he produced and got him to make the song Decline. Um, and he then, even if you want to say him and Sosa had some beef, then he followed it up with Earn It as well as Valley and the other whole bunch of other songs, even after um, Sosa and Chop had their differences. Get in the comment section and let me know what y'all think below because I already explained I feel in full detail of why I think um, of what happened to Young Chop. I'm gone.